If you're dead set on an Intel Core i7 for your next video editing and gaming PC, you're probably deciding at this point between the i7-5820K or its 6800K Broadwell E counterpart, or the i7-6700K or its KB Lake 7700K counterpart. For the record, a 7700K isn't much of an improvement over its Skylake counterpart, nor is the 6800K over its Haswell E counterpart. These newer CPUs have almost identical IPC gains over their inferiors and won't alter your frame rates by any substantial amount, clock for clock. So this video will attempt to tackle both the gaming and editing slash rendering sides of the equation. This should be rather black and white for those interested in only playing video games, but there are a few exceptions worth mentioning, and while content creators tend to focus on core counts over clock speeds, optimization is key. Let's start off first with the latter. The 5820K seems like an obvious choice here. Six cores, 12 threads, excellent overclocking headroom, but at the expense of, well, a greater expense. Not always, but you can usually build on a comparable Z170 platform for a few bucks less. On a good day, a 5820K will set you back around 300 to 340 US dollars. The same can be said of the 6700K, although X99 motherboards, yep that's where they get you, are anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks more expensive on average, and that price can go up to upwards of 400 to 500 dollars. That's insane for a motherboard, but that's what you get with the X99 chipset. But if price isn't a concern, it should just come down to which CPU performs better in any particular task, in this case rendering and gaming, that's what we're going to look at right now. We'd expect, based on synthetic workload tests, that at 4.6 GHz each, the 5820K would have a slight edge. It's technically 25% faster clock for clock, including all of its cores, but that won't matter if the program in question isn't properly optimized to handle six physical cores. Adobe Premiere is no exception, and that's the program that I use. It's the one that a lot of professionals use, and that's why I use it when I benchmark CPUs like this for content creation. You're looking at a 6.5% difference in rendering times, and in case you're wondering, tacking on an additional two cores and four threads in the $1,000 6900K yields similar margins. Yeah, I was let down to say the least. Puget Systems reveals a wide array of tests showing how the of diminishing returns plays a huge role past four cores for this program. I have a link to this article in the video's description, so check it out for more details. Your results will vary depending on your program of choice. For example, DaVinci Resolve tends to be more GPU dependent, and something like After Effects heavily relies on clock speed in general. But as a rule of thumb, more cores isn't always better, which is why I've stayed away from Xeons in this video. I know not everyone will agree with me, but if you want my two cents, I say the 6700K is the winner of the content creation realm. It's just the all around best bang for the buck CPU out there for rendering, for editing, for content creation in general, if you're using something like Adobe Premiere to edit and upload videos. Sure, you could spend over $1,000 for marginally better performance. No one is arguing that those CPUs are better at their jobs, but from a price to performance standpoint, you'd be crazy to do so for strictly this purpose. Multi-multi-core CPUs are designed for entirely different workloads and programs that take full advantage of the horsepower. Taking a step back, here's a bare bones i7 editing rig build list for anyone interested. As you can see, a cheap motherboard and modest power supply are key when it comes to keeping the price down. No need to spend 200 plus US dollars on a Z170 or Z270 motherboard. No need to spend 200 plus dollars on a power supply when a $100 power supply would do the job just fine. These parts are linked in the video's description, by the way. Let me know what you think. Now on to gaming. I already have a video here explaining the relevance of Core i7s in the gaming sphere. It's a tricky subject only because people are always looking so far ahead and using the term future-proof. But right up front, it is difficult to justify one in the context of most modern titles, Battlefield 1 among the few exceptions. But if you're considering an i7 for the purpose of future-proofing your brand new PC, straight up, the 6700K again is the way to go. Consider GTA 5 first. Here's a great balance of CPU and GPU horsepower at work in a resolution that severely tugs on neither component. With equivalent specifications across the board, save the CPU and of course the motherboard, the 6700K pulls ahead ever so slightly. The most noticeable difference is in the minimums. Both runs of this benchmark were smooth and uninterrupted and it's unlikely you'd be able to distinguish between the two, but a win's a win and that's all we're going by here. City Skylines up next leverages three cores heavily verified here, and because of this, gives the point to the 6700K. The Skylake CPU's stronger single core performance plays a huge role here, and the fact that the game isn't optimized for anything above three cores really doesn't give an edge to the 5820K. 
When games aren't optimized for more cores than are offered by the CPU at hand, primary limiting factors will be frequency and core strength. Instructions per clock is an attempt to measure these variables. Quite the opposite of GTA 5, which is kind of weird, Cities yields identical minimums and a 5 FPS disparity on average. Again, still smooth gameplay. You won't be able to tell the difference. These are i7s we're talking about, but 5 FPS is 5 FPS. Another win for the 6700K. Now let's change it up a bit. Counter-Strike Global Offensive, CSGO. This one surprised me. We're looking at FPS disparities in the 20s across the board, signaling an interesting shift in game optimization. These are very high frame rates where CPUs are being heavily leveraged, perhaps explaining the difference. Four extra threads can go a long way for a few games. Speaking of a few, I'm sure you're wondering how Battlefield 1 turned out. Quite like you might expect, actually, thanks to the six cores in the 5820K and 1440p, we see 80 versus 84, 68 versus 74, a definite win for the 5820K. It's a hot topic right now. Forecasting CPU usage for AAA titles to be released in the future. Is higher core count gaming the trend of the future? Do expect these frame rates to shift non-linearly as resolution changes, by the way. In 1080p, expect the 5820K's lead to increase, and in 4K, expect it to diminish as GPU usage increases. But let's not get carried away. I can count probably on one hand the number of games that successfully utilize more than four physical cores. It's why i5s are so dang popular in the gaming community. Streaming and multitasking are another matter, and I have several videos on the subject, but for now, this Battlefield 1 benchmark does not represent a majority of the scenarios you'll encounter. So let's end with Witcher 3. It's a GPU-hungry game, and limiting ourselves to a single 1070 definitely affects things here. Let's try our best to dissect this one. First up, the i7-6700K won the minimum category, and the 5820K won the average category. So what does this mean? From the standpoint of the CPU, not much. The graphics card is what's being abused here. I reran this benchmark to show you. See now, the 5820K wins the minimum category, and the 6700K the average. I imagine if I kept running this benchmark over and over, which I won't do because it's very time consuming, uh, these scores would just continue to flip flop back and forth. When you're GPU bound, anything goes. The tiniest of stalls can result in substantial frame rendering delays, substantial in processing terms, affecting frame rates in unpredictable ways. When it comes to CPUs, we can limit background processes and rearrange orders of operation through tools like the Task Manager, but with graphics cards, it's completely different. Software revisions, for example, can lead to drastic performance impacts when it comes to graphics cards, many of which are unpredictable and difficult to isolate. Nonetheless, I'm calling this one a draw thanks to the nature of Witcher 3 and its GPU-bound behavior. So you've seen how there are several, several variables to consider. There is no black and white answer, not when it comes to these two CPUs right here. There's no black and white answer as to which processor is better for gaming, nor content creation for that matter, because program optimization is difficult to quantify. What I can say is that both are fine for both, just straight up price aside. It comes down to which you'd rather invest in, what your upgrade paths look like five years from now, what graphics card or cards you're using, keep PCIe lanes in the back of your mind as well. But if you want my answer, my personal just stance on this whole issue, I make no secret about this. Having gamed and edited on both for several months, the 6700K with a decent overclock is the surefire way to go. Or the 7700K, just keep interchanging those. Whichever's cheaper at that point in time. Not much change from 67 to 77, so don't upgrade if you were thinking about doing that. They're all great CPUs and will last you a long time. I don't like using the term future-proofing, but eh, whatever. Yes, i7s are more future-proof than i5s. It's kind of obvious why. But are you willing to put your money where your mouth is? That is the question. Hop on over to this video right here for more details. If you like this video, this one you're watching right now, be sure to give this one a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs down if you feel the complete opposite or if you hate everything about life. Be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Don't be shy, folks. Stay tuned for a plethora of other videos I have planned. I have a huge list of topics I'm going to hit on in the next month or so uh, and also several products that I need to review in a timely manner. So bear with me on that. This is Salazar Studio. Thanks for learning with us.